prove us. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, and thought for our in thee. Thy body we have done, and thy body we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may fly in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. life to the world. Evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him. He lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. From now on, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though he once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now all the taxpayers, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. <clears throat> he was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come home and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property and with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Be seated, please. Our gospel lesson today is one of Jesus' most memorable stories, along with the parable of the Good Samaritan. Today, the parable of the prodigal son is one we have heard since the days of our childhood. From its first telling, it has touched the hearts of men. Rembrandt's famous depiction is among 13 million images it has prompted over the millennia. A statue of the father embracing his wayward son was chiseled for the 1939 World's Fair 
and now stands in the Bishop's Garden at Washington National Cathedral. A noted Dutch priest, Henry Nouwen, wrote one of his most moving works in The Return of the Prodigal Son. The parable itself is a story which truly touches many hearts. And there are multiple ways in which it resonates with us. The wayward son who acts as if his father is dead. The wayward son going to a far land. The prodigal wasting all his resources. The penitent son returning home hat in hand. The gracious, loving father. The angry brother presenting his brother's wealth in return as if his faithfulness all the years had been overlooked. Those are just a few layers. The parable is like an onion. Each layer that we peel off reveals another layer. The core is always elusive because we are distracted by our own self-description among the layers. Yet there is a fleeting image which sticks with me, stands out. It tells us so much about God and invites us to imitate the divine nature. Let me summarize the story and then point out the glimpse of grace which I see. A father has two sons. The younger one asks the father for his inheritance, even though the father is still alive, and even though the younger son is not the rightful heir. It is a slap in the father's face. The father acquiesces and gives the son half of his belongings. The young son travels to a far land and wastes all his inheritance. Broke and lost, he finds himself feeding pigs, a distasteful task for a faithful Jew. At wit's end and wallowing in pig slop, he decides to go home and throw himself at his father's mercy. Likely, you know the rest. But there is one brief passage which stands out to me. It is simple, poignant, and powerful. These are those words. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. The father not only greets his son, he was yearning for his return. He was looking longingly out the window, hoping for his lost son's return. The love for which the wayward son hungered was always there. The forgiveness is prevenient, if you will. The father yearns to forgive and be reconciled as much as the wandering son. It is terribly difficult, maybe even impossible, for us to imagine the depths of divine grace. We have no human analog. We think we understand it, but from the first days of the church's history, we have been placing restrictions on that mercy. It is there in the book of Acts, and it is there in church history. We are humanly unable to accept or offer such divine generosity. There are situations at which we find ourselves at the end of a rope, exhausted by having Forgiven, forgiven, and forgiven. You know those situations. 
Someone has taken advantage of you or your good heart. Maybe it is even yourself or maybe another person. We cannot go on. We give up on ourselves or another person. You say, enough is enough. I've done that myself. Sometimes we do that to preserve our sanity. But what we should always be mindful of is that is not the way of God. It is a fact of our human nature, one of brokenness and sin, and it is always a tragedy, a failure or inability to meet the magnanimity of God. Maybe it is the best of unappealing options, but it reflects an absence of hope and denial of the fullness of God's mercy. The divine nature is without any qualification. It is exceedingly generous. It goes beyond our ability to comprehend. As you face those human limits and strain against them, Hold on to the image of God standing at the window, hoping for reconciliation and reunion. Amen. Amen. Trusted to your church the ministry of reconciliation, and do with the power of your forgiving love all who serve in Christ's name, that we may share in your work of reunion and celebration. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven. And Eternal One, 
In Christ you have proclaimed God's reign among us and showed loving compassion as the true crown of leadership. Be with our nation and all in authority that we may work in harmony with you to create a world of feasting and reconciliation. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven. Compassionate one, you welcome sinners and feast with them. You restore the prodigal and embrace the elder. Find all who are lost and return them home. Protect those who work in dangerous, dirty, and disreputable jobs. Give security and joy to all who labor and yet are poor and hungry, and expand the hearts of those who are dutiful and proud, that the whole human race may celebrate together with music and dancing. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven. Gracious one, unite all of us in this community and bind our divisions with your compassionate love that we may welcome all brothers, all as brothers and sisters, to feast on the goodness of our inheritance. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven. And whose sin is put away. We pray for those who are in need. May your new creation bring them hope. We pray especially for Russell, Angie, Arthur, Doug, Jay, Nicole, Denson, Leanna, Roger, Carly, Lil, Lynn, Warren, John, Scott, Mary Lou, Becky, Myra, Sean, Chris, Will, Jane, Shirley, Betsy, Liz, Rod, Amber, Mary, Rem, Claire, Daisy, Lisa, Pat, Nathan, Angie, Hope, Cynthia, Maggie, Kairos Outside, Happening, Kim, Brian and Family, CJ, Catherine, Mitchell, Jack, Ed, Ginny, Madeline, and all those in need of prayer during this pandemic. Are there others? Ellie and Rick and Susie. We also pray for those on our long-term prayer list, especially Margaret, John, Donna, Kristen, Chuck, Keith, Ralph, Martha, Adrian, Warden Gladys, Will, Hermit, Ivan, Rosellen, Dean, Ryder, Donald, Janet, Jean, Tom, the Yula Battle family, Doug, the Mike Dwyer family, Jean, and Vicki. We pray for all first responders and all in the armed forces and for their families, especially Joe, Tim, Christopher, Brewer, Lewis, Patrick, Brandon, Ashlyn, Sarah Grace, Bernie, John, Cody, Hunter, Joey, Derek, Austin, and all in harm's way. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for our fellow parish of St. James in Fairhope. We pray that you weave our diocesan capital campaign into your kingdom and consecrate to your glory that which is given. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Myanmar. We pray for all people affected by natural disasters. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We embrace gratefully the abundance of your gifts to us, especially for the wedding anniversary of Ginny and Ed and for the birthday of Joan. We entrust to your compassionate affection all who have died. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven. And Protect us from presumption and judgment of God, and lead us into the joyful celebration of your new creation on earth, as we may share in the generous banquet of your victory and enjoy the reconciliation of all people within your forgiving compassion by the power of your Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. 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 Peace.
Chapel this morning for the 1030 service. I want to say a special welcome to visitors and uh, we would ask if you've got a moment to please complete the visitor's card found in the pew rack and uh, either place it in the alms basin when that comes around or give it to an usher following the service. I would remind you that all baptized persons are invited and encouraged to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion at this altar. Now, I'm going to come clean with y'all on something. I got chastised by the vestry this past Thursday about my announcements or shortage thereof. So I'm going to cut the baby in half and do just a little bit. And uh, I would mention, first of all, that today is a very special day. It is the 44th anniversary of John Hobbs as a parish musician. And I would say, and I love. And uh, also, I want to mention that this coming Saturday, April 2nd, at uh, the Cathedral, uh, Christ Church Cathedral in Mobile, at 9.30 in the morning, there will be a diocesan-wide service of reconciliation and repentance for uh, the sins of racism. In the, his, in the history of the church and in the country. And uh, one of our preachers will actually be Bishop Phoebe Roth, R-O-A-F, of the uh, Diocese of West Tennessee. Now, if that name bears a rings a bell for you, her brother was the first round draft choice for the New Orleans Saints many years ago. <laughs> and so, uh, and let me put it this way, Phoebe didn't fall too far from that tree. So uh, anyway, I would encourage and invite anyone to come to that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord our God. It is right It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. That fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
God for the people of God. And take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on you in your heart by faith. By the Spirit of God.
thanksgiving, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son and Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now in the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and civilness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth in the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Thank you.